relationship yeah. with God. Amen. Yeah. See, there's so many people talking about Lord, please help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. Yeah. So, yeah. See, there's a whole lot of talk about who God is. Yeah. But there's very little talk about who Jesus is. Huh? Yes, See, yes. Jesus is the one who will save your soul. Yes, yes, yes. He's the lover of our soul, yes, saints. Yes, yes. Don't you know that Jesus loves our soul? Yes. And he wants everybody to be there sitting right, right there next to him. Yes. When we cross over the river Jordan. Yes. Amen. 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 So see, we serve a great God. Yes. We serve a good God. Yes. We serve a God unlike no other God. Yes. We serve a jealous God because he yes. says you, you should praise no other God but me. Yes. Amen. Some of us are serving our money. Some of us are serving our cars. Some of us are serving our properties. Some of us are serving our clothes. We're praising, we're giving all our worship to those things and instead of praising the Lord. Amen. 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 This next song we're going to sing. Say, you know, Lord, have mercy. Uh -huh. Come on. See, I just want to testify about the goodness of how God is. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody need to hear that. Oh, I wish I could get one or two that know what I'm talking about. Huh. See, some of us was in the muck and the mire before we got saved. Some of us was out there in the streets doing this, that, and whatever until we got saved. You see? And then we got saved and all of a sudden we forgot about who Jesus was. See, we want to talk about God, but we don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. Yeah. I am the truth. Yeah. Huh. And I am the light. Huh. And if no one can see the Father except if they go through me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Yeah. Yeah. This next yeah. song that we're going to sing is simply God is God. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. And if y'all want to join in, just please join in with us. But remember, we yeah. are praise him. Yes. Remember who we praise. Yes. Yes. See, Scripture says, enter into his gates, his courts will pray, his gates, of course, will pray, into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart, into his courts will praise. I get excited sometimes. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. He never sleeps. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never slumbers. I never have to worry. I never have to worry. I never have to wonder. I never have to wonder. I, have to wonder. I trust in God. I trust in God. With all
of my salvation. Oh, yeah. And he's the ruler of every nation. Oh, yeah. He's the God of Abraham. Oh, yeah. He's the God of the second chance. Oh, yeah. He's the God of the second chance.
come, Lord God, to exalt your name together yes. and to make a joyful noise yes. yes. for the rock of our salvation, yes. Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you are doing you. in our lives, what you have done, and what you shall do, Lord God. Yes. Because yes. you are God that never changes, Lord God. Yes. And so we thank you for that. You. Lord God, we ask you right now, Lord God, to have your own yes. 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 Lord God, begin to move from heart to heart and breath to breath. Yes. Begin to stir us up, Lord God, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Send forth your Holy Ghost fire, Lord yes. God, yes. to Lord God, to quench us, Lord God, and burn up anything that's not of you, Lord yes. God. Lord God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, yes. because you are my strength and you are my redeemer, God. And as we begin to forget about ourselves, Lord God, and concentrate on you, Lord God, Lord God, let's begin to see you high and lift it up in this place, yes. Lord God. Let us feel, Lord God, you moving, Lord God, in our hands, in our feet, Lord yes. God. Let us feel yes. you moving yes. all over us, yes. Lord God, as you begin to shift the atmosphere, yes. Lord God. Somebody is hurting, Lord God. Yes. Someone is lost, Lord God. Someone, yes. Lord God, is on the crossroads of a decision, Lord God. But Lord God, before they leave this place, Lord yes. God, we pray, Lord God, that a change yeah. will come yeah. into the situation, yeah. Lord God. Yes, Lord. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I ask you as you stand to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Amen. Amen. This will be a continuation of, the, of God Makes All Things New Comfort. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43. And I'm going to read verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. And it reads, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. 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 This morning I want to speak on the subject. God is doing a new thing. Yes. So walk in the newness. Amen. 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 Saints, we are all faced sometimes with uncertainties and fears. When we embark on a new path, there are things which include people, places, habits, traditions that we are sometimes afraid to leave behind. You see, the barriers to a new path might seem on an overwhelming rather, but I hear God saying, mm. forget yes. how things were done Amen. and let me do a new thing Amen. for you, Amen. in you, and around you. Amen. Begin to walk in the newness even before you see it manifested. Verses 18 and 19 in Isaiah chapter 43 belong to a part of a long form the prophet or the author wrote to tell the people of Israel about a new phase in their life as God's people. It was written at a time when the kingdom of Israel had fallen and many people from Judah had been exiled, exiled to Babylon. The center of Jewish worship, the Jerusalem temple, had also been destroyed. But it, Isaiah wanted them to know that a change was coming. And this periphery tells of how God is going to do a new thing. How he's going to make a way yeah. for the Israelites to return 
to their homeland. Since you see, neither the Israelites nor us are intended to be stuck in the past mm -hmm. or even in the present. We are to be constantly looking for the new things that God is doing. And he is doing new things. Yes, yes. That's what the word says. Now notice that Isaiah does not tell the people to do a new thing or to make a new path. He lets us know that it's God who will be doing the new thing. You see, God has a plan. And God is the one that's in charge. Amen. Initiating something new in the world. But it's our choice to get on board with the new thing that God is doing. If we don't do that, we'll be stuck in the past. Doing our own thing. Being out of alignment with God's word. Now those who have automobiles, you know when you car. Get out of line. Amen. Amen. They kept the shift. But you are not even trying to shift. Amen. Amen. So that's what we are doing sometimes. When we're out of alignment with God, we are moving into direction that God does not want us to move into. Amen. So he's telling us he wants to do a new thing to realign our walk with him. Amen. Amen. Now God is always, as I said, doing a new thing. Yes. But we may not always see it or feel it. Sometimes it feels like we have stayed in one season yes. for a long, yes. long time. And we all wonder when it will change. But it's important to know, saying that we must walk by faith, not by sight, and not by feeling. Because we won't if we don't walk by faith, amen, we will give up or we will give in to despair and hopelessness. Saints here me today, a major step to embracing the new thing that God wants to do in our life yes. is to change our focus. Amen. In other words, God is saying, quit. Looking behind you. And start looking ahead. Yeah, yeah, That's in verse 18. Amen. He says, forget the past. Yeah. Do not dwell on the past. Because we are continually saying, looking behind us, yeah. we cannot see where we are going. Amen. And we just might miss our turn that leads to our blessing. Or our destiny. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why does God tell the people to forget these things or to forget what has happened in the past? Well, I imagine because we, we do not move forward. Amen. Amen. When we are constantly looking in the real view mirror. Amen? Amen. I believe because it's the world of to this, the past is a rudder to guide us. It's not an anchor to drag us. Amen? Amen. And though we must learn from the past, not live in the past. Amen? amen. Can I get an amen from somebody in the morning? Amen. 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 amen? Therefore, let go of the past yes. if you want to experience the newness well. that God is doing. Again, in verse 18, it said, appreciate the past, but move on. Because if we are ever going to move on to the new things in Christ, we must learn that we cannot depend upon past victories to sustain us. You see, the children of Israel had many victories in their past, such as leaving Egypt, surviving 40 years wandering in the wilderness and the shoes didn't when I run out and the clothes did not run out of I also included conquering the land of Canaan which was full of giants, amen. But now in verse in mean, chapter 4 and this chapter amen 43, we find that they are in captivity. You see all their previous victories 
was doing nothing to set them free right then. They needed a new miracle. They needed a new victory. They needed God to do a new thing, amen. And when we find ourselves in similar situations, the question to ask is, what has God done? The question must be, what is God doing right now? Now, this passage does not promise that the future will be easy. Because in the latter part of verse 19, it uses the images of the wilderness or wasteland to describe an unknown future. Let them know that they were getting ready to go into rough ground. But I also encourage them to know that God, hallelujah, is with them and will provide for them no matter what they will face, even in this uncharted territory. You see, they can try to navigate on their own and fail, amen. Or they can choose to travel in it with God and let God do the leading, amen. amen. You see, God provides a way for us. And just as God was promised to bring the Israel back to their homeland, God promises are still for us today. The future is not happening to us, it is happening for us. And we choose to follow in faith, it is happening with and through us too. Now we can get encouraged, the saints, from Isaiah 43 and 19 to the answer which shows us that God is still at work in our lives doing new things. Yes. You see, our text scripture shows us that God gives us signs that he's, a, he's doing a new thing in our lives. It says, do you not perceive it? Now this passage calls us to stop what we are doing and to listen and to look for where and how God is doing something right now. Now sometimes we are so busy that we do not perceive the new thing. Amen. But God has said we need to learn to stop what we are doing yeah. in order to discern the signs and prepare ourselves accordingly. Amen. So Amen. if you sense that God wants to do something new in your life, stop, pray about it, and then ask God for a revelation. Because he is faithful to show us. Amen? Amen. Now if the truth be told, we don't always see what God is doing in our lives. I remember a time myself feeling frustrated and confused, amen, because I didn't understand the season that God had me in. But I have learned in those times to continue to press through in prayer yes. and trust that God will give me wisdom and grace. Yes. Now, many years back, I had applied for a position that I just knew that I knew that I knew I was a shoe in for that position. I knew I had it wrapped up and in the bag, amen. I knew that I got that job, amen. But as time got closer to that to the position, amen, somehow it got canceled. Now I was devastated. But God then opened another door Amen. for me. Amen. It might not be what I wanted. And I truly didn't yeah. understand yeah. why God would close that other door and open that one I didn't feel was a good fit for me. However, it wasn't until years later that I realized that that new position prepared me in ways that I would need in the future. Yes. You see, God knew it, and he was great enough to change my path. Yes. Thank yes. God, amen, yes. that I allowed him to change yes. me, amen. Yes. 
Amen. Can I tell you something? Let's go. Some of the new things God is doing in your life is not going to be what you are expecting. He's going to do it a different way with different people under different circumstances. Could it be that God is doing a new thing for you right now and you are not perceiving it? Is he open the door but you refuse to go through it? It's not what you thought it would look like. Because he's bringing people across your path that have divine connections. But still, they are not who you wanted in your circle. Don't get set in your way, saints. The new thing may not look like what you had in mind. Remember, Jesus was not who the, uh, the, the Jews had in mind. They know yeah. Jesus would come as a warrior, uh -huh. but he came as a savior. Amen. 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 They thought he would come, amen, yeah. and destroy yeah. some things. Yeah. But he came to fulfill yeah. some things, amen. Yeah. Yeah. So we may not always understand the things God does in our lives, but we follow his lead and trust his process. Yeah. We will see the fruit of what he's doing. Yeah. Never assume, saints, that because we cannot see what God is doing, that he's doing nothing, amen. amen. You heard me say that when we're down to nothing, we can find that God is up to something, amen. 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 Yeah. Now we to talk about five signs yes, to understand when God is doing a new thing in our life. The first sign is that you will find that some doors will close when God is doing a new thing. You see, when God is doing a new thing, he'll close some doors. You may try hard to knock on them, but nothing will seem to work. And this is a clear sign that God wants you to walk through another door. That he's already open for you. If you look around your life and see that things you are trying to do always seem to fail, yeah. it's time to ask God to lead you to that new thing yeah. he's doing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. The second sign is well, God will give us repetitive messages when he's doing a new thing. Amen. You will hear a sad sermon. You might read a passage, a post. You may be watching TV or listen to the radio and you are here, keep hearing over and over again that new thing that God wants to do in your life. Sometimes God will even give it to you in a dream or a vision or hear someone speak something over your life. It's like the message is everywhere you go. And this is God trying to get your attention and get you to see and prepare for the new thing. The third thing is you will have a desire for a new thing. When God wants us to do something new in your life, you might not first have that desire. It could be something you never wanted to do. Then all of a sudden you find yourself, you want it. Amen. Amen. Another way he does this is by giving us grace for the change. Yeah. It's like we begin to have a supernatural ability to accomplish what God has placed in front of us. It doesn't mean it will be all sunshine and rainbow. It means that God will give us the strength, the wisdom, and the peace to do it. You will find yourself saying, how in the world did I accomplish this? But you will know it was nobody but you. You will find yourself understanding this is the very thing I wanted when I didn't think I wanted. Amen? The fourth sign is that he will lead you in a new direction. When God wants to do a new thing, you will find that your life is moving in a new direction. And as you follow God's lead, you will find that God, the doors that were once shut will begin to open. Yeah. Opportunities will begin to open up 
in the direction God is taking you. Well. And everything will seem to flow, amen. And the last sign that God gives you when he gets ready to do a new thing is that he will shift, shift rather, some of your relationships. Yeah. Some of them will remain and others will fizzle away. Not everyone is headed where God is taking you in your new direction. And some people have to be left behind so they don't hold you back because they can't see what you see that God is doing. Amen? Amen. They won't understand to, to you that the God will tell them also. But God doesn't have to tell them anything. Amen? amen. He's already told you. Amen. amen. And so they have to be left behind. Amen. However, God will also bring new relationships into your life that will be a blessing and will be instrumental in doing what God wants you to do. Yeah. So we have to pray, saints, so that we have to know what relationships to keep and which ones to keep to the curve. Amen? Amen. Amen. When God is about to do a mighty new thing, he sets his people to begin to pray. Because not every door is to be open that is open is for us to enter. Yeah. Behind some open doors, there is trauma, setbacks, setups, turmoil, sometimes even death. All doors are not the will of God for your life. Yeah. Therefore, say, we must pray fast, seek the Lord before entering in. Any door that the Lord leads you through, he's able to keep you no matter what you go through at the enemy. Some doors you must turn around and walk away from. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you, when God is doing a new thing, begin in prayer. Because prayer will help us spiritually prepare for the new things. God said that his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. But through prayer, we can align our thoughts to his for a clear perspective. Yes. And when we see things from God's perspective, he will begin to see, we will begin to see what he's doing in our lives. Yes. And as we're preparing for these new things, God said patiently wait for the Lord. Yes. Because he wants to shift some things in your favor. Amen. Your waiting will not be in vain. It will prepare your heart for the new, and it also helps you to let go of the old. Yes. And just because you don't see, it doesn't mean that God hasn't done or hasn't begun a new thing. Yes. Look at the middle of verse 19 again, where it says, Now it shall spring forth. That verse is saying that right now, it's going to spring forth. Amen? Amen. It's, it isn't something that always in the future. Now that was a puzzle to me until I went to the Hebrew text and was surprised to make a discovery. You see the Hebrew word spring here in verse 19 is the word for sprout. You see the problem I had was the word now suggests that God is going to do a new thing. It, it ought to be, I ought to be seeing it right now. However, what this text actually says is, now it shall sprout. Jesus, in speaking of the entrance of his kingdom, says in Mark 4, 28, he says, first there's the blade, then there's the hay. And after that, you begin to see the full grain in the hay. In other words, preliminary to even the visibility of the blade above the ground, there is a sprout uh -huh. beneath it. Amen. There is a seed yeah. in the ground yeah. that yeah. produces yeah. a sprout yeah. that you can't even yeah. see right now. Amen. 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 So what the Lord wants us to understand when he says he's going to do a new thing yeah. is that it is always in the process. Yeah. Yeah. You might not be able to see it yet, but it's set in motion. Yes. Just like after a long cold winter, just a change going on in the earth underneath, preparing to approach spring. Beyond what perhaps been the cold, bitter winter, 
or the drought of your soul. The Lord is saying to somebody this morning, amen, that he is set in motion that which he will bring about a deliverance yeah. in a time of growth. When God's new things sprout in us, saints, it will be the fragrance and the beauty yes. of a yes. spring time yes. in our lives. Yes. Somebody just needs to grab hold of this revelation yes. this morning. Yes. Yes. Just because you don't see it or feel killed don't mean you've not already been healed. Amen. Just because you still take a drink. It doesn't mean that you have not been delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And just because yeah. I don't see the great growth explosion here as it's been prophesied over me over and over yeah. again, yeah. it does not mean it has not happened on, in the yeah. spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen, amen. But God wants to do something fresh. 
And it will cost us something, saints. It will cost us to change. Yeah. Oh, it will cost us to give up some routines, amen. Yeah. It will cost us to get out of our comfort zone. Amen. It might even cause you to give up a position mm -hmm. that you have been told yeah. for yeah. God to do a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. In the Bible, we read about Jesus healing people in different ways and not using the same way twice. So in your situation, God said he's going to act in your life differently. Yes. Yes. So don't be looking at the same place for a blessing. Yes. Don't be looking at the same people to give you a blessing. He said, keep looking to the hills yes. for which come yes. your help. Yes. He wants you to come and say the thing that he will surprise you with what he does. Yes. Remember where you came from. Yes. But, how, but, but, but how he got you where you need to be, he didn't say forget it, amen. Because he's doing amen. something new in a different way. Yes. Hear me when I say, if you are holding on to something, that doesn't belong to you and never intended for your life, then you need to just let it go. Yes. If you're holding on to past hurts and pain, he's saying, let it go. Amen. If someone can't treat you right, love your back, see your work, he said, let yes. that back go. Amen. Yes. If you're holding on to some thoughts of evil and of sin, It's mine. Yes. Yes. If you're in a wrong relationship or addiction, he's saying, let it go. I can't give you the new because you're still holding on to the old. Amen. 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 If you're stuck in the past and God is trying to take you to a new level with him, he said, let it go. Yes. Stop holding on. Release it so I can elevate you. Amen. Amen. If you're trying to help someone who won't even try to help themselves, he said, stop, stop, let it go. Yes. Turn it over to yes. me. Let me yes. do the yes. work yes. in their life. Yes. You can't do it, but I can do it. Amen. Amen. And Amen. if you're feeling really depressed uh. and distressed, yes. he said, let it go. Grab yes. hold unto my peace. Yes. My peace yes. that passes yes. all in understanding. And if there's a particular situation that you're used to handling yourself, God said, take your hands off it. Yes. Let it go, amen. Yes. Because you can't do it, amen. Yes. I can't do it. I am God. Yes. He is God. Yes. He will always be God. Yes. And so say, let the plan Forget the former things. Because yes. God is beginning to do a new thing. Yes. God is doing a new thing yes. by using what we have been through to take us to places we have never seen. Won't he do it? I believe yes. he yes. will do it. Yes. Yes. I believe that this is the season of the divine reset. Yes. In order to receive God's new thing, we have to reset our mind by forgetting what was and concentrating on who God is. Yes, yes, we need to reset yes. our faith. Begin to believe that the God we serve specializes yes, in the yes, impossible. Yes, yes, yes. And if he says, won't he do it? Amen. Yes, yes. We see the new thing. Yes. We need, amen, to reset our position. Because God says, Right now, we are sitting in heavenly places, amen. Amen. We need to know not only who God is, but who we are and who God says we are. Yes. He says we are the beloved. He says we are cherished. Yes. He says that we are more than conquerors. He says no weapon formed against us will prosper. Yes. He says yes. that we are precious in his sight. Yes. He says we are one of a kind, yes. created yes. for a yes. unique person by a unique God. Yes. Amen. 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 And we need to reset our priorities. Yes. But sometimes we are just too busy. Mm -hmm. We have to reset. Take time out. To study God's word. Yes. Take time out to pray and fast. Take time out to listen to his voice. Because he said, I'm speaking, but you are not listening. Well, 
own way. Yes. But sometimes you got to get out of God's way. Yes. And make that new thing. Yes. So take your hand off the situation in peace yes. and let God be God. Yes. Amen. I'm going to end with this prayer. Father God, it's time for us to forget the past. Yes. Yes. Forget the mistakes that we have made. Yes. And focus on what you are doing right now. Yes. I know that you want to do new things. And I know that you are doing new things. Yes. You have placed new people in our lives. And you closed some doors while preparing us for the new opportunities that you are sending our way. Yes, our knowledge and process may be painful at times, but we know that it will be for our good and we'll be, we will be stronger and wiser if we let the process complete. Yes. Thank you for a clean slate. Yes. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. 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 Let the church begin to say it on the field and give God some praise. Let the church begin to magnify the God. Let the church say it on the Let the church say it on the Let it be. Let it be. Amen. of the church are still open. Yes. They weren't closed last week, but it might have been closed for some people who might not have been here, who might not have been ready to receive God because their heart and their minds were closed. And so God is saying, this is a new day. Yes. This is a new opportunity for you to come to Jesus. Anyone today do not know Jesus for themselves. He is saying, come to me. Forget about yourself. Forget about who's beside you. Forget about who's not here. He said today is the day of salvation. He wants to do a new thing. Anyone today wants to give their life to Jesus Christ. He will make your life brand new. He will take care of of you because he's a good, good father. Surrender to God. Let go and let God be God. Anyone today, anyone looking for a church home where you're on Facebook, where you're here in person, you can join Brother Spirit by Lazarus, you can join on the Christian experience, you can join by baptism. Someone even last like week joined under watch here. Amen. If you don't know what that means, just come. We will talk to you. We will explain to you the plan of salvation. We will explain to you how you can become a member in a church. Anyone today? Anyone today? Anyone today? Want to do a new thing?
future things that will be happening. Of course, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we have our worship service here in person and on Zoom, I mean, not on Zoom, Facebook. On Wednesday night at 7.30, we have our Bible study, and that is held virtually only on Facebook Live and Zoom. We're studying the book of Job, and anyone needs to know how to connect with the Bible study and to see me or just see a member of this church. Amen? Amen. The alcohol announced meeting have resumed that greater spiritual. They were being held on Mondays, but Deacon Ford informed me this morning that they would go back to being held on Tuesday nights at 7 30 p.m. Yeah. Because that's the night. Tuesday night is registered with the AA. Amen. Amen. So again, forget about Monday night. That's the old. Okay. The new is Tuesday night at 7 30 p.m. Amen. This Friday at 7 30 p.m., we will resume uh, leadership training via Zoom. Amen. I know we have not dealt in a minute, but we will have our leadership training just for all the leaders. And you know who they are. We will Zoom this Friday at 7.30 p.m. On this Thursday, from 9 to 12, Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church was located in Marbury, Maryland. Some of you that's on the PRBA mailing list has already received this, amen. But uh, it's this Thursday, from 9 to 12, uh, the women will have a one-day women's conference. And one of the facilitators at this conference is Reverend Cheryl Henry, who was one of the facilitators here for all things new conference, amen? amen. But I think it cost is ten dollars and you can register at the door. So this Saturday from twelve from nine to twelve PM, Amen, at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church was in Marbury, Maryland. Amen. That's not far from here, far about fifteen minutes from where the church is. Amen. amen. Then on Sunday, July the ninth, at 12, I mean, at, at, at 9 o'clock at the time, uh, oh yes, I'm sorry. Sunday, July the 9th at 12 noon, Greater Spiritual will have a fellowship, and I think it's open for men and women, at Ruby Tuesday in Clinton, Maryland. But you have to reserve with Sister Ford because a head count is needed. That's July the 9th at 12 noon, amen? If you want additional information, see her after service, amen? But she needs to... No ahead count, amen, amen. amen. And we want to do it sooner than later, amen, with the head count, amen. So make sure that we have a space reserved for us that we won't be in the general population. Then on Saturday, July the 15th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, I will conduct a, a mental health uh, session at Zion Baptist Church in Welcome, Maryland, where uh, Gloria Savoy is the pastor, amen. That's July 15th, on a Saturday, amen. Uh, vacation Bible School will be held here July 18th to July 21st. The time is already on the, on the thing is already printed on your handout, amen. I posted it on Facebook, and I think somebody asked me, was it open for all ages? I what the age. I need to get back with that person, too, and stuff. But it's for all ages. All ages, amen. We have classes for all ages. I think I... Uh, uh, Deacon de de uh, Helene, I'll probably say from three on up or something like that. I don't think they, three and up or two and up, I don't think they're going to accommodate babies. <laughs> two and up, so I'm going to tell them two and up. We, yes, two and up. We'll host for classes for those ages, amen. And on Friday, some of these things are fall off, but I'm saying we don't plan today. You're kind of get fall off. I have an engagement. Uh, to, uh, to gospel, tap that about the church. That's Friday, September the 1st. Amen. And that will be held via Zoom. And on Friday, the, the, the 22nd, I'll be guest revivalist for my home church in, in Middleburg, North Carolina. It's just a Friday night, and I'm coming back home on that Saturday. Amen. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Sunday, this is attended to me, but Sunday, September the 24th, uh, it's going to be our Women's Day service here at Greater Spiritual. And Sunday, October 29th, will be our Men's Day service. Amen. And the final and, and, and way of announcement, there's some canned goods in the bag that I picked up. Austin, I picked up. Uh, from a food bank 
at Metropolitan Baptist Church in Indian Head, Maryland. Someone usually calls me when they have a food delivery in this area, so he called me. I had got a call from him in a while and stuff, but it's a food bank. You know, they deliver to different areas. So they were delivered to, uh, to Brian's Road, but they changed the location where you go and pick up the food. I know St. Stephen was there, they had a van, and they loaded that van down from top to bottom with uh, boxes of canned goods, because they have a major giveaway they do on every Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday and everything. I hope we got peas and spring beans. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if it's spring beans. I know they have, but I don't think I got it. There might be something back there anyway. I'm going to check it. But there's some, I think some chili, some pe uh, tomatoes. Tomatoes, cut up tomatoes. Everything's canned just about. Tomatoes, pears. I can't remember. Just go check it out. Amen. Amen. In the way of a man, her status, there is some improvement. Amen. Amen. I think she's still, I think paralyzed, I think on the left side. Left side. But she still has some movement on the other side and everything. They got to put a tray in her too and stuff. And the father's looking to move her at some point and back to this area. But he has to find a facility that can accommodate someone with a tray. Amen. Amen. I know my sister was in a facility in, I think it was North, Northeast, somewhere. Um, and she had a tray in her too. So there are some facilities that in this area that will accommodate uh, individuals with tray. Yes. So continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for yes. her. And pray for her boys too, especially the youngest one too. Yeah, man. He's kind of there in the house by himself. The father said he checks on him, but still, yeah. he's there pretty much on his own. Mm -hmm. So let's pray for her, for her, for her boys. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah, they, they, they will be taken care of. They, they will just, the God will take care of them. Amen. 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 We're glad to see Daryl back in the house. Amen. 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 We had some young challenges, so we want to continue to pray for him. Amen. We're glad to see Sister Belonga Bowman back in the Amen. house. Again, she had some challenges, and we pray for her. Sister Burrow Barbara had some health challenges, we pray for her. Yes. So, so many of us have health challenges that yes. we want to pray for. Amen. 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 Daryl got a birthday this week. <laughs> That's not on my, but not for some reason, not on my, when is your birthday? 27th of June. 27th. I think mine is this. Trying to get away with it. June 27th. As you, as you see, we had an anniversary uh, for Justin and Condor, June 24th. Yeah. And, and then that's for, and then, of course, Daryl, June 27th. Okay. And then we've got some July birthdays that's coming up. I won't go over those yet. Hey. Right now, and then some August birthday. So you'll have, so you'll know when some birthdays are coming up also, and anniversaries. So keep those in mind. Amen. 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 So we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Are there anything specific anyone who wants me to pray for before I start praying? Yeah, uh, my my hip. Hip. yeah my last time is uh, here. Oh, uh, Kenny Chase. What's the name? Kenny Chase. He just been right here in the area. He had on Moss Pastor, can you pray for um Philip Lewis? He's going to court for some charges. Can you pray for the uh, Jennifer family? They murdered their son yesterday. Who's that now? The Jennifer family. Jennifer. 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 Okay. Yeah. My nephew Pancho. Pray for my brother John. Who's that? My brother John. Okay. Pray for you and your family, Pastor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. to the almighty God, yes, yes. who's able to do a season of fun of all that we can think and ask of him. The God that knows our down sitting yes, and our uprising. The God that's truly good
to us. He's been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And as we begin, Lord God, to call out names and situations, God, we might not get everything right, but we thank God that you are not hard of hearing. We thank you that you are not forgetful, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we just join in today praying for Daryl, Lord God. Yeah. We pray, God, you know all about the health things that he's going through, Lord God. Yeah. And, Lord God, we pray that you would just shift his health around, Lord God. That you would touch him, Lord God, from his head to his feet, Lord God. Lord God, reestablish and reset, Lord God, all those things that's gone wrong in his body, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Sister Veronica, Lord God. We pray over her body, Lord God, her health challenges, Lord God, that she's going through. We're praying for Larry and Cheryl's hips, Lord God. Praying for my knees and Oscar problems, Lord God, in his body. James problems in her body, all those problems for people who are experiencing health challenges today, God. Yeah. Yeah. Lord God, you have not forgotten us, Lord God. And we know that we have come before you many times praying the same thing. Yeah. And Lord God, even today, we're just reminding you, God, that we know that you still are here, Lord God. Yeah. And when we bring these things up over and again, we are not, Lord God, challenged that you are healed, Lord God. We just bring them up for our sake, Lord God, to remind ourselves that you are still in the healing business. So Lord God, touch people this morning, God, from the crown of their head, Lord God. Touch their minds, Lord God. Touch their hearts and lungs and livers. Touch their kidneys and knees and feet. Touch their shoulders and hips and backs, Lord. Touch, Lord God, their eyes and their mouths, Lord God. Touch every part of our bodies that need healing right now. Send forth your word, Lord God. As we know, God, you said you sent your word to heal. And so we speak healing words over our bodies to be made whole this morning, Lord God. Because we know that you are a great physician, Lord God. And Lord God, that you specialize in what we need, God. Lord, what I need, somebody else might not need. Yeah. But Lord God, you ask me ask you to move in that situation, God. We pray for Kenneth Chase, Lord. Kenneth Chase, Lord yeah. God. Yeah. John, Lord God, Ford. And others, Lord God. You know what the names were called out for, Lord God. We pray for Philip Lewis <clears throat> and others, God, who have charges in court, Lord God. Yeah. Not only are you a physician, Lord God, but you are a righteous judge, Lord God. Yeah. You are able, Lord God, to just adjudicate our cases, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to stand in for Philip today, Lord God. You know, Lord God, what he's going through, what he's facing, Lord God. And so we pray, God, that you will have favor, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you will move in a mighty way, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for the bereaved, Lord God. We lift up, Lord God, the Jennifer family, Lord God, others who are bereaved, Lord God. The Posey family, Lord God. So many others, Lord God. Half a farmer, Lord God. Lost his father. And others, Lord God. We pray for your comfort, Lord God. That you will give them comfort in the midst of their loss, Lord God. We pray that you will give them the strength, Lord God. To face days without their loved ones, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that you're still here. Even though the loved one might be going on to the other side. But you are still here with them. Because your word says you won't leave us or forsake us, Lord God. And we stand on your word. Because all your promises are yes and amen, God. We continue to pray, Lord God, for my sister's daughter-in-law, Andy, Lord God. They still don't know what's going on and why. They say her brain has outgrown her head. They said that usually happen in younger children, Lord God. But Lord God, you know, Lord God. It didn't take you by surprise, God. And Lord God, even though the doctor might not know the cure. But we standing on your word, Lord God. Again, that you specialize, Lord God. We continue to pray, Lord God, for the cruiser's family, Lord God. You know what they are going through, Lord God, in their homes, Lord God. 
Lord God, we pray, God, that you restore that electricity, Lord God. We pray, God, for grace and mercy, Lord God, for them, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Mr. Bernard's brother, Carl, Robert, and Ted, Lord God. We continue to pray, Lord God, for Minister Merlin's grandchildren and children, Lord God. Pray for her brother, Daryl, who's a caregiver for her mother, Mother Journey again, Lord God. We lift them up to you right now, God, that you will move in those situations, Lord God. We continue to pray for Lynn and her family, Lord God. Lord God, even though it might look dim, Lord God, but we thank you for the glimmer of hope, Lord God, that you still... Have her yet holding on, Lord God. She yet, Lord God, in the land of the living, Lord God. So despite the trade and other things, Lord God, we're going to praise you, God, that you are doing a new thing in her life, Lord God. Some things, Lord God, are passing away, Lord God. Many might have counted her out by now, Lord God. But Lord God, you said not so, Lord God. So we continue to pray, Lord God, for her for full recovery, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, Lord God, for the young children and babies, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Hunter and all he's been going through, God, and other children that's abused and neglected, Lord God, and missing, Lord God. We pray for them, Lord God. You know them name by name, and you know what they're going through. And you said, Lord God, anyone, Lord God, does anything to these children, Lord God, be better if a millstone was tied about their neck and their castle into the sea, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we are praying for righteous judgment, Lord God, for those who are harming these children, Lord God, those who are stealing children, Lord God, and selling them, Lord God, and putting them into slavery or whatever, Lord God. We are praying, God, that they'll make their way back home, God. I pray for Donovan, Lord God, as he prepares to go off to college in and, and Kansas, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for a good year quarter semester for him, God. We pray that everything is in order, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We continue to pray for those with colds and flu and yes, COVID, Lord God. You still, Lord God, heal up COVID, Lord God. It has not gone away completely, Lord God. But we thank God it's not as bad as it used to be, God. So we are praying, God, that you continue, Lord God, protect our respiratory system, Lord God. Some are struggling to breathe, Lord God. So we pray, God, that you may breathe them easy, Lord God. The Lord God, that you will be the oxygen in their, in their bodies, Lord God. That you will be, Lord God, the breath, Lord God, in them, Lord God. And Lord God, the list for cancer patients, Lord God, are growing day by day. But Lord God, you know about Monica and Hugh Stevens and Ray and Donald Gray, Lord God. You know about Sandra, Lord God, and Sheila, Lord God, Andrea, and Charlene, Lord God, Brianna, Lord God, and Keisha, and Nana, and Stacy, and Donna, and Juanita. You know all about those names, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we ask you to heal those cancer in the body, Lord God. We pray, God, that you would give them strength, Lord God, as they undergo treatments, Lord God. We know it takes a toll on the body, Lord God. But we pray, God, that you will keep them in all the ways, Lord God. And even when they might be down for a day, we ask you to raise them back up yeah, yeah. off of their sick bed, Lord God. And to get them to stand up and continue to run on now. I pray, Lord God, for my friend, Pastor Carrie Alexander, Lord God. She's getting ready to do a lot of blood, blood tests, Lord God. And see about her kidneys, Lord God. We praying, God, and Lord God, that her kidneys, Lord God, is still functioning, Lord God. So whatever is going on, Lord God, we pray that it does not result in dialysis, Lord God. And those who are on dialysis right now, Lord God, my brother, Lord God, and others, Lord God, those who are waiting for a kidney transplant, Lord God, we pray, God, that you will move in that situation, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you, God, for all that you are doing and yet to do, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those who are traveling, Lord God, give them traveling grace and mercy, God. We pray for our leaders here at the church. We pray for our leaders, Lord God, in our country. We pray for our leaders in our homes. We pray for leaders all over, Lord God. 
Lord God, that they will stand up and be counted, Lord God. Lord God, they'll be in place, Lord God, and they'll, Lord God, be doing the right thing, Lord God. So we are praying, God, that there'll be no pride in them, Lord God. But we are praying, Lord God, that they'll continue, Lord God, to be bold witnesses for you, Lord God. Even, Lord God, in uncertain times, Lord God. Let them be able to stand up with boldness, Lord God, and declare, thus says the Lord, Lord God. We pray over the offering right now, God, that you will move right now, God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord God. And we continue to pray over this building, Lord God. We know some things are falling apart right now, God. But we still know that you have it in control, Lord God. So we put this building right now, greater spiritual building, in your hands, Lord God. And Lord God, that everything that's broken, Lord God, everything that's missing, Lord God, lacking, Lord God, that you will supply that need, Lord God. We pray over, Lord God, marriages, Lord God, lift them up to you, God. Pray for those in rehab, Lord God. We pray for those with reconciliations, Lord God, among family members, Lord God. We pray that you will bring back family members that are estranged from one another, Lord God. And Lord God, we put it all in your hands, Lord God. And all the things, Lord God, that people are going through, God. Lord God, give them assurance that you are going through with them, Lord God. There's not a day nor an hour that you are not with us, Lord God. And Lord God, we can't make it on our own. We declare the decree that we need you, Lord God, to hold our hands, Lord God, to lead and guide us, Lord God. And Lord God, we want to follow you where you lead, Lord God. We want to go where you say go. Do what you said do. Yeah. Say what you said say, Lord God. Lord God, we want to be in your will. That your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.